Hi guys, welcome to my sixth video. Thank you for joining me. My name's Adrina. I am an Australian teacher, a teacher's pay teacher seller and a mom. So things get a little bit crazy around here. But in today's video, I have an exciting one because I am going to be showing you how to create your own clip art in PowerPoint. All right, <laughs> I have lots of tips and tricks I can share with you guys because the first store that I opened, I did actually create clip art on PowerPoint and I did sell a few PowerPoint clip art creations. So I do have some tips and tricks I'm going to share with you in this video. I will just quickly say that if you are going to be selling your clip art on Teachers Pay Teachers, you do have to invest in the business commercial use uh, PowerPoint. You can't actually sell your clip Part if you are just on like a personal or home home account so you do have to upgrade to a business commercial use account which you do have to go and get if you are planning on selling on TPT but if you are just making clip art for yourself personally then you don't need to worry uh, and I will just say one reason why it's good to be able to know how to create clip art on PowerPoint is because sometimes you might want something specific for your classroom and you've looked on TPT and you just can't find it so in that case, it's really good that you have the knowledge or the skills to be able to create little pieces of clip art for your own self to use for your class or for your products, um, things that you might have not been able to find. And if you make it yourself, then you know it's pretty much yours to use in whatever. So you don't have to worry about terms of use or anything of anyone else's if they've created it. So that's one reason why it's good to create your own clip art. Without further ado, I just want to quickly share a couple examples of clip art that I have created in the past and I'll show you a couple examples now. <laughs> there are a couple of my examples of clip art that I have made in the past. So I hope they are a good example of things that you can create. And it is basically when you're creating on PowerPoint, it's basically limitless to your imagination. What we're gonna be using in PowerPoint is the shapes tool. That's how we're really gonna be creating all of these clip art. So I'm gonna show you that. Now, let's get into it. In this video, I'm going to go over three main clip art things that you can make. So the first one will be this robot here. The second one will be this plant. And the third one will be this balloon. So I'm going to show you those three really simple things, how to create those. And I will actually chuck in a few other little extra tips and tricks on the way. Let's get started. Okay, hi guys. So we are on our computer. I'm on my computer now. And I am just going to start off by going into file. So I've just opened PowerPoint, go file, new presentation. Now I personally like to start off my clip art on a portrait view. So I'll just go to file, page setup. I'm going to go to letter paper and I'm going to just make sure that the orientation both has the arrow pointing upwards. So I just want to make sure that I click on this arrow here and this one can stay at the bottom. Basically, you just want both the pieces of paper arrow pointing up. So you want to select both of them on the left hand side and press OK. And doesn't matter if you press scale up or scale down because we're just gonna delete that anyway. So we're just gonna delete what's on the page. Now, what I like to do, now this is something that I learned from trial and error, but basically I wanna just zoom out and we wanna use this piece of paper, but we want to, when we're creating clip art, we want to make sure that it's like basically bigger than this page. So all this gray area here, you can use that as your board to create on still so don't think you just are limited to the white piece of paper you can go over that white piece of paper and go into the gray background so i'm going to show you what we're going to be creating today so i'm just going to sh i've already created this little guy so i'm going to insert my little robo character that i created so i'm going to show you so this is a little guy that i made 
I'm going to show you how easy and simple he was to make and you can follow along with me to create your own little robot dude. So basically in PowerPoint, I'm going to assume that you do have a little bit of understanding of PowerPoint, but if you don't, you this is a program that you can learn fairly quickly. There's heaps of YouTube tutorials on how to use PowerPoint. Basically, the tools that we're going to be using are in the insert bar and it's in the shape bar. So all of these shapes, as you can see here, these are basically our drawing tools. This is going to provide us what we need to create whatever kind of clip art we want. When we're thinking of creating clip art, we want to think of basic shapes. What shapes makes up that picture or that particular object? So I just made him from scratch. I didn't have any reference image. That's just something, this little robot guy, something that just came out of my brain. So I know that there's no copyright images um, or anything because it just, it came out of my brain and I didn't have anything to look at to when I made this. So if you are wanting to create this little guy, I do give you guys permission to uh, create him, sell him if you like, but just make sure that you change it up slightly. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So I started off creating this guy with just using, these are recently used shapes. I'll show you from um, actually just where you get them naturally. So in the rectangles one, you want this one, it's called the rounded rectangle. So we are going to create around a rectangle and I'm not going to do exactly exactly the same dimensions as, as him because it's not really that important this is just for uh, reference because this one I've already made this is just reference of how you could do it so what I want to do now is I've got um, it's, it's blue obviously the feel of that and I have a line around the edge which is quite thin so to begin with I just want to click on the shape make sure it's selected go to shape format and up the top here you've got shape fill and shape outline so we want to start with the shape outline and I always usually make this probably around six points now you can see it's dark blue here but I'm going to make that black and I always like having black because it's easier, I guess, too, when you want to see what a black and white version would look like as well. So that is that. And I can see this robot that I've already made has a smaller head already. So I might just make his head a little bit smaller. So as you can see, guys, um, I'm not, I'm probably at 100, as you can see, I'm at 114% in my zoom level and I'm actually over the page you, and like I said you want to make sure it's bigger than that page so when we actually save it as a PNG image that it has a bit more clarity to it because if I was to make this smaller then when I was to zoom it out it'll blur it will be more blurry I don't know if that really makes sense I'll try and explain it a little bit better as we go on so so I just want to fill him in. I'm going to fill him in grey and I'm just going to go to the shape fill and press this bottom grey one here. Now what I want to do is I want to grab, go back to insert to shapes and I'm just going to grab the circle and the basic shapes. It'll be this circle here and I'm going to draw two circles. Now one tip, if you're on a Mac, I think if you're on a PC this can apply but it's just um, control instead of command. But what I like to press is command D which also just duplicates the, uh, instead of pressing copying in place, it just create it duplicates that same image. So it makes it much faster than going through and right clicking copy and paste. Just control D or command D if you're on a Mac. So now I want to do the same thing but I want to fill it with white and I'm going to go to the weight down here and I'm going to change it to six points. I'm going to turn it to black and I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other eye. Now I'll show you a quick tip too if you're worried about whether, you're, whether the alignment is on point or not if you just select both of them. On a Mac you have to hold down command and click to select both of them. Then you can go to align and you can actually go align to top and you know that they're perfectly aligned. So that's awesome. Okay, so for the other part of the eye, I'm actually just going to shortcut this. Instead of going back to insert circle, I'm just going to click on 
one of the eyes and just go control D again. So I've got an other, another eye. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. I'm going to actually fill it in with black. And this is the thing, you can change your eye to make it looking up. You can make your robot eye looking down to the side. You can do whatever you want with this little eye bowl. But <laughs> for now, I'm just going to stick to putting him in the middle. And I'll just duplicate that again, Command D on a Mac. And there we go, we've got the two eyes. Now to also <laughs> speed this process up, process up again i'm just going to go Control d again and i'm just going to click and change this one to white and i'll get rid of the outline on this one because this is going to be the shiny little white reflection in his eye so this is also a nice little way to give your little character a bit of character so <laughs> that was weird <laughs> i said that character a bit of character <laughs> Um, anyway, so that's that. Now he's got his eyes. As you can see on this robot, he's a little bit far, his eye spacing is a bit far apart than this one. And that's okay. You can obviously alter it to however you want. But um, like I said, I'm not trying to create exactly the same. This is just the template of what it looks like and you can create your own. And that's what I'm doing here and I'm showing you how to do that. So for his mouth, I'm just going to go to insert and shapes and for this one I'm actually going to choose that rounded rectangle again but I'm going to show you a little trick with this one so I'm just going to draw his mouth but you'll notice when I have the rounded rectangle um, you'll notice that I have a little yellow box here and what you want to do with that yellow box is you want to actually hold it down and like move it so if I move it all the way to the left it goes very pointy and straight like a proper rectangle and if I move it all the way to the right it goes nice and rounded with that rounded edge so I'm going to do that I'm going to fill that in black and I'm going to take oh actually I'm, I'm not going to take away I'm just going to actually no what am I going to do I might actually just so I'm just going to add a black line I might actually change that to six too because it will be easier for when I um, do a black and white version of it so I might do that and I can just alter this and change this to however I wish for sizing you could even put a happy face a sad face on this robot whatever you wanted to do okay so that's his face just how you need to um, and now we're going to go and do his little antenna so this is something that you need to just keep in mind because as you can see on this part here um, there's a bit of layering going on here and I'll show you what I mean so if I was to make this little headpiece make it a bit thinner as you can see so I'll just fill it in the same gray I'm going to change the weight to six that's just the outline the weight just means the outline color as you can see I could have it like that I could try my best to match it up or I could actually send it to the back and that's what I'm going to do. So when you're creating PowerPoint clip art images, you want to think of it as if you're layering things on top of each other. So what I mean by layering is I mean think of a blanket. So think of you are under a blanket. So there's one layer on top of you, one blanket. If I was to add another layer, another blanket, that would be a second layer on top. So I want to send this to the back because I'm going to be using a circle on top but I'll show you what I mean I'll insert the circle first so you can kind of understand what I mean so I want to create the circle for his little antenna put it where I want it and I'm going to fill it in the same color and change the weight to six now I, the reason why I'm changing it to six everywhere is because you want that consistency with the lines okay so you don't want to have like I'll just show you quickly you don't want to have like a one point and then a six point you want to make sure all your line thicknesses or weight is the same point system there is a way to change it bigger than six just so you know and I'll show you that maybe a little later on so as you can see if I was to like that that would be pretty good and it you could easily do that but in some cases it's actually good to just right click and send it to the back and so then it's actually behind this part here so that's something that I like to do 
Uh, now, what I would like to do is I'm going to make his body, but first I'm actually going to go into shapes again and I'm going to use a different shape. So the shape I'm actually going to use for this one is going to be in the rectangles again, but it's called round same side corner of rectangle shape. <laughs> so it's a bit of a random one, random name one I mean, but anyway, so that's that. So I want him to have this little body. So if I was to change, uh, if I was to move this, you can see how it changes the shape of his body. So I'm just going to, I want to have it similar to what I had it. So I'm just going to control Z. I'm just going to have it how it originally came out to make it easier. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to change his weight, the thickness to six points and voila. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of a different, um, there's a point to this one. So what I did with this is I actually, and I've actually used this little guy. Oh, sorry. So I've actually gone to block arrows and I've used the pentagon shape. Oh, where did he go? So let's use the pentagon shape. And... I'm just going to align it as best as I can. I want to change the thickness to six and align that as best as I can. Perfect. So I'm going to change that to gray and you can just move it up to suit your needs but as you can see there's a there's a line here and I don't want that line so to be able to get rid of that line there's something that's super easy that you can do is just insert grab grab a rectangle from the rectangle section and you want to make sure when you're doing this you turn off the outline I find this almost the easiest way to do it and just fill it so you're just left with um, a, tri a rectangle that you can kind of just do your best to kind of line up. Now sometimes you might have to add an extra one on because um, it might not let you line it up correctly but in some cases it will and what I like to do in these cases so as you can see if I was to zoom in there's a little bit of a jagged line here but what I would do to overcome that is I would just insert just a straight line and I would just line over that so you might not be able to see that but I made a line line over it and I'm going to change that line to black for starters and then I'm going to change that weight to six and voila that line is perfectly smooth again and then I can just duplicate that command D can move that over to here and perfecto now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert Going to insert another rectangle so this little guy again which is the rounded rectangle I am just going to give him an inside and just adjust it on that yellow part to however you want it to be and I'm just going to fill that in white and I am going to change the weight and change it black so that's given a little inside part so just want to align it as best as you can and that's that now to add the little arms that was pretty easy but I will actually go and do the neck first so to just do the neck all I did was grab a rectangle to do the neck all I did was to grab a rectangle and just draw over where I wanted the neck I want to change it to grey again. I want the thickness there. And as you can see, it's at the top. So I want to think of the layer thing that I said and I want to click it. Um, and I want to press control and send to back. So that's sent to the back. So it's behind all of these other shapes. So what I want to do, and can I just quickly say guys, if you did get caught up and you didn't want that to the back, you can also right click and you can bring it to front. So if you wanted it back, obviously you could just go control Z or you could just change it by moving it to the front. So 
So these little areas here, bring to front and center back, are things that you're going to need to know about. And that's kind of a way to think of as what's above your what what's above or below your layers. So in this case, let's just center back again. Now that's his little neck. I'm going to give him his little his little spot at the bottom. Just draw a circle there. Fill it in black. And I'm just gonna add the weight six and make sure that's black. And might just make it a bit smaller. But just alter it to however you want it to be. Now for the arms, I'm just going to go insert. I'm going to add a little arm here. And so, oh, sorry, I forgot to say. For his arm, just go insert shape and you want the one that is called block arc. So the block arc one, you just want to section it out to however you like it and you can alter it again with the yellow parts here. So as you can see, I can make it longer um, or I can make it thinner or wider, but I'm just going to go back to how it was. I'm just going to keep it the standard way. I'm going to turn it to its side. I'm going to fill it in grey. I'm going to give it a black thickness or weight of six. And I'm going to stretch it out a little bit more. And I'm going to send it to back. And because his arm's looking a bit like, how you going? Let's just move him in a little bit more. And then all I need to do is control or command D. And I'm going to, this is another little tip here, is to flip it, all I'm just going to do is go up to the top here, so I shape form it, and under rotate, I'm going to flip it horizontal. And voila, and I'm just going to move him, and I'm going to send it to the back. Perfect. Okay, and I just want to move him to be a little bit closer so it matches the other arm. And voila, we've pretty much made our little... Uh, robot guy but there is one thing that you do need to do now so you just need to make sure because if I was like okay I've made my guy oh but he's not stuck together this is the most important part of making your clip art so now he's all one piece or well, now that he's been made I want to select him so I want to highlight all of him and I know that everything's highlighted because if I moved it, then I'd move the whole of him. So that's good. So what I want to do is I want to right click and I want to, oh, let's just try that again. Let's select him. I want to right click and I want to press group. So once you group him, he's stuck there. So what I like to do then this is optional, but I find it in my experience of making clip art with PowerPoint, it's always good to do because if you make a mistake, then um, he's still there. I like to duplicate this slide. So if I just go to the left-hand side and just duplicate it, so I've got the bottom one here. So I like to have my first one when I make him, that's my original. And the second one will be my like test dummy or whatever, like my final. <laughs> so... Yeah, so once he's grouped, now I want to save him. So I want to right click and I'm going to go save as picture. Now what you want for here, I'm just going to go to my desktop to make it easier. I'm going to save him in my PowerPoint clip art tutorial. I'm going to just call him a name. So let's call him Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot. Oh my gosh. I can't even spell. <laughs> Sorry. Let's call him Mr. Robot. So Mr. Robot, Robot, Mr. Robot. Okay, now important. This here, savers type, you want this to be a PNG. There are different options here, as you can see, that you can save it as, but the best one is to be, for this particular thing, would be a PNG. So that's good. All you need to do now is name, PNG, save. So when, oops, when you are working in another slide, so for example, let's go new presentation. 
let's just quickly um, just let's just change the background for example okay so just change the background we're going to insert our little guy we'll go from pictures sorry so to insert your little guy go insert pictures picture from file you want mr robot that you've just created and voila there he is and you can scale him to make him smaller you can scale him to make him bigger and what i have found if you make him bigger to begin with on the slide then when you scale him he's not going to be as blurry that's some that's the tip that i learned when i did a lot of travel and error with creating clip art on powerpoint so that's a little secret tip for you guys um, but yeah with him you can do a lot of little different things you could add some text hey guys oops let's not move that hey guys you could give little directions in there you could add numbers into him um you could do so many different things with this little guy like i said it literally is just totally up to you and your imagination so that's your little robot dude done but i will say if you wanted a black and white version of him i will actually show you that as well so let's go to our project board so i'm going to delete the original one so now i've got this one here i'll leave him here that's my test that's my final version and i'm going to duplicate the slide again because i'm going to change my next one to make him a black and white version so to simply make this a black and white version i want to make sure that i've selected him and i'm going to go to shape format now there are two ways you can do this the first way i this Kind of, it depends on how I've created it, but this is one way that I can do it. If I just click, I've just selected the whole image, the whole Mr. Robot, and I'm just going to go shape, shape fill, and I'm going to select white. Now, you'll notice that the eyes have gone white. Every little detail has gone white. white. So you want to fill in the parts that you want to stay black. So in this case, I want his eyes to stay black. And the rest can be... Um, you could actually even make his mouth black if you wanted to. But if you wanted to keep his mouth white, you could do that as well. And you'll know, if you move him over here, that he... Um, I didn't even know what I was going to say then. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, that's how you make it black and white. There's another way you can do... You can make him black and white, and that's just simply... This is the longer way. But again, it depends. So say if I just create another one of him, this is another way that you could do it. You could do it individually. So you could change his head white. You just got to click on the pieces and go white. So if there were certain things that you wanted to keep white or change the colors, then you could do it that way. But if you're just wanting a simple black and white, then I would probably recommend doing it the other way. Now, if you wanted to change the color of him, all you'd need to do, same sort of thing. Literally, you can just do another, another duplicate Mr. Robot again. Click on him and let's go and change him green. And you're just going to have to recolor in some of the things. So let's change his eyes back to white. His inner eye black little shine of his eye white let's make this black and let's change this white and I want him black and you've got another color so that's one way to create another color and then again if you wanted him in another color color you'd have to click right click and you want save as picture um, and you want to make sure you rename him. So in this case, you might go Mr. Robot Green PNG in the same part, same place you saved your other one and save. And then as you can see, if I wanted to add, now this is one easy way to, I'll just quickly show you another tip. If I just duplicate him, if I wanted to ask, have Mr. Green Robot next to him, I would just right click, change picture from a file, Click Mr. Green Robot and voila, there he is, perfectly the same and next door to his mate. There you go. 
So, yeah, that's little green Mr. Robot, grey Mr. Robot. You can create as many colours as you'd like robots. You could create a rainbow robot. You could do whatever you'd like. Um, so that ends the tutorial for Mr. Robot. The next way of creating clip art is going to be a little bit different and this is a bit more complex and a little bit more difficult. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy. So let's just create a new, let's just get out of this one. Let's create a new presentation. So same thing, I want to make sure that I'm doing it in portrait mode. So I want to go to letter paper, make sure that they're both selected on the left hand side and I'm going to go OK. It doesn't matter if I scale up or down because we're going to delete what's on the screen. And I just want to zoom out a bit. doesn't matter as long as you can kind of see the piece of paper in the background and you want your clip art bigger than the size of the piece of paper. So in this case, I'm going to show you how you can create something based off an image. So I'm going to insert a picture I took today, this morning, of a plant. Oh, let's turn him around. So this is my little plant, my fake plant. Let's just crop him a little bit. So to crop, I just right click and click crop. Let's make him a little bit smaller. Oh, let's not move him all the way around, shall we? Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so let's just crop him. And voila, I'm going to make him a bit bigger. Now, one tip that I like to share when you're doing this one, because we're going to be using my magic tool, I call it. This is like this tool is going to change your life. I promise you. If you're making clip art, you need to know about this tool. This took me a little while to work out. So I'm about to give you and spill the real tea on how to make clip art now. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to click on here and I'm going to first of all go into artist effects. No, I don't want artist effects. I want transparency. So I'm going to go to transparency. I want to make it a little less transparent so you can see when we put the lines on it. Okay, so you want that transparency down. Now the special tool that I'm going to show you is an insert, it's in shapes and it's actually called, it's in lines and it's called curve. This is your best friend. <laughs> like seriously, I love this tool. This has been able to um, allow me to create so many different things. This is basically your drawing tool. Okay, so we want curve. Now, when I'm creating um, with Curve, I just want to let you know it can be finicky. It can take a couple of goes to do, but it's basically a little bit finicky. But once you get the hang of it, it really becomes kind of easy-ish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline this kind of plant but first I might start with the the pot side of it so I'm gonna start maybe I'll start here so I know that my hands kind of covering it here so I might even and this doesn't have to be perfect I'll start here but what you want to do you want to basically just kind of click it around your pot plant or whatever you're kind of uh, whatever you kind of tracing in some form some way now this is an image that I personally took so I know I got rights to trace this image um, so yeah like this is good for if you don't know how to draw well but you know how to click <laughs> this could be something that could be super easy for you to do and learn how to create your own clip art using so I will let you know it sometimes isn't a hundred percent like accurate or whatever but for most part of it once you get into it like you can create lines that are pretty good so let's just do that and this is the part where you do have to be kind of more careful is you do have to kind of be careful that when you're lining these up that you line them up correctly because sometimes it goes a little bit out of context but it just takes trial and error with this 
So as you can see, um, we've got like a little pot plant side of things. Now this is just for demonstration purposes. You could easily go ahead and do it a lot neater, but I'm just showing you for example. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, again, I'm gonna change the shape outline to six. So I've got the pot plant kind of going on there. Now I wanna create the inside here of this pot plant. So to do that, I could just actually grab a circle from the basic shapes and I'm going to just, I don't be overly concerned at how neat or anything this is because, you know, it will take time and effort to kind of just figure out how, where it goes. I'm just, like I said, doing this for demonstration purposes but I'm just going to paint it white for now so I know where I can so I can see it and I'm just going to change the weight to six and make sure it's black and then I basically want so that looks all right but if you wanted to have that um, behind it sort of how it is in the picture I can press center back and then I could click on my picture again and press center back so I can kind of see where that is. But now I want to just click that and I want to take away the color so I can kind of see the rest. Um, and I can adjust it a little bit more however I want it, okay? So let's just go and leave it there. Now I'm going to focus on doing the little leaves. So again, go to your magic tool, shapes, basically curve. And what I like about this tool is you can trace things, but you don't have to make it exactly the same. Like you can make it slightly different, but basically when you're using an image, you just want it to be a guide. Sorry, I'm just gonna have a quick drink. <laughs> yeah, so you just want it to be a guide of how to create this thing, because it can be hard to create with this tool if you don't have a picture or a guide to use. So here I'm going to just use this as a guide as to where I kind of want my leaves. And again, I'm not going to do them exactly the same because I want a little bit of differentiation. But I'm just going to keep with the same kind of um, like a similar guide. Doesn't Like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. And to be honest, it's better if you don't do it exactly the same. It's much better because then it's then turned into something different because it's not the same then. So don't be so concerned about it has to be on the exact same leaf um, line. Just kind of play around with it and just use it, like I said, as a guide or a reference. But it doesn't have to be super, super exact. So this does take time and... <laughs> This is why some people would prefer to buy clip art rather than create it themselves because it does take a little bit of time. But like I said, once it's made, it's made and you can use it in whatever you like. Um, like I said, if you're selling it though, you do need a commercial license, but besides that, you can use it in whatever you want to use it in because it's something that you've created. That's the beauty about creating your own clip art. And that's one thing I really do love and once you start making things, then you start to have a little bank of clip art that you can use and you can um, refer back to, which is awesome. And then it's kind of more uniquely your own then and you're not, um, you know, it's just more you. So again, I love buying clip art as well. So don't get me wrong. It's awesome when you have other artists that can save you time instead of having to make it, you can go and buy some clip art that's I, to be honest, I'm a bit of a clip art collector myself, <laughs> but um, yeah, it uh, certainly is fun when you can create your own and you can do things to create things that you particularly wanted or that you were looking for. If there's nothing out there that you can see that you um, sort of need for your classroom clip art needs. So this is where it gets a bit tricky because you've got to make sure that you line it up to exactly where you left that line. 
Okay, so you've got to really use your eyes for that or you've got to make sure that you change um, where you start so you can see it clearly. So that's that. Now I'm going to just outline this little guy and change it to six again. So as you can see, I've got that. And what I might do, um, I'm not going to worry about the hand because that's going to take a bit long. Um, I'm just going to take him away and I'm going to basically color these all in white. So that would, I started off basically with my black and white version here. So I'm going to show you uh, something different now. So that's my little plant. Again, this is a bit wonky, so if you were to sell this, you might want to kind of fix that up a little bit, make sure it's a bit neater than this. But um, what you are going to do is you can, again, change the colors on it. So let's, I want to show you a trick here too. So if I want to make this black, see how there's a bit of light here. If I go to shape fill um, and I go to gradient, now there's different options here but this one is more on the gray so if i was to change it, it would change the color completely um as you can see it just changed it gray but it did give you gradation but what i want to show you is if i want that more like black but in the gradient if i go to design here and i go to format background and then i go to gradient fill oops sorry i've got to make sure i'm clicked on let's go to control z i've got to make sure i'm clicked on the actual element or the part that I want so if I go to gradient fill you can see here it says gradient stops so I want to change this little color here to black I want to make this a little bit darker and then this can be like the lighter part of it so and one good thing about it is too you can also change the angle of it so if you go down it can it just gives a lot more dimension into your clip art if you wanted to add certain so that looks a lot more like dimension in that so I might leave it like that and I'm going to add a bit of green so I just go back to home and just go to shape format and let's go green and I want to do the same thing so I go to gradient and I've got to change it now so Let's change it to green and you can obviously change the colors to whatever you want and you can obviously move this slider to make it slightly different too and the colors that you put in here are going to change the look of it as well so just you have to have a little play around with this but this is a really good tool that can add more dimension into your uh, clip art piece basically. And then for this, I'm just going to select that solid fill. I could do gradient again. And also I'll show you, there's also preset gradient. So you can actually choose some presetted ones that they've just kind of already made for you. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go with something simple and I'm just going to change the colors on that one. And if I want more colors in this too, guys, just click on to more colors and go into your wheel. That's the easiest kind of way I find. Um, choose the color that you want. This is, if you bring it down, you can kind of get more different colors. I'm looking for like a brown kind of color. So we'll go brown. And I don't want that white, so I might just go brown again. Actually, if I want that a little bit darker I could just move that down and click like that and move him down and I might even do darker here as well lovely okay so that's my little plant I want to show you something else I'm just going to save him as um, this first so I'll just select him all again I'm going to click save as oh no I'm not so it's always good Sorry, you could have done that way, but it's always better to do it this way. Do groups and then they don't move. So always group it first. Then I press right click, save as picture. Let's just do plant one. That's plant one. Again, if I wanted to change it to just the black and white version, I could just duplicate it and then I could just go fill white. And I didn't have to change anything because there's not really anything I wanted to change in that. So. That's basically just the black and white version. 
but what I do want to show you is I can make this two completely different looking plants. So I'm just going to show you in this one. I'm just going to du duplicate this slide. Get rid of. No, I won't get rid of this. So I'll just get rid of these. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it would look like if I was to take away the outline. So I have to do this individually. So if I just go to shape outline and click on no outline, this is a way I like to do clip art as well sometimes. And you can see how much cuter that looks already. And you know, that without the lines is super fun to create the clip art looking, to create it looking that way. And you could make it even more like light and bubbly, change this to pink and look, you've got a brand new plant. Like, look at that. You could change this to a certain, a lighter color, more like, I don't know, like a, lighter fun color or could even just do a solid feel and do that like with that so you can see that's just like a brand new plant so you could make it like totally boho like look at that guys there's so many different things you can do with this from going to this plant and then going to this like it's so different so i might save that actually and I'm going to save that as boho plant or I can yeah, just do it as boho plant. Again, PNG, save. And PNG just really means it's got the ability to be layered and people on, people on TPT are looking for um, clip art that can be layered. So that is basically our little tutorial for our plant. You can obviously do this with any kind of picture but just make sure that whatever picture that you're using as a reference that you do it slightly you make it different based off that image so even if you have an image for inspiration or reference you change it up it's not exactly the same and again i can't stress this enough make sure that you're not recreating things like disney characters lego cat in the hat things that are really big name trademark names just don't even go there if you can um, because you want to avoid getting into any sort of trouble with that so that is that my last little tip my last little tip is going to be a balloon so let's do that now this is the most simplest easiest one of them all Again, just make a new presentation. And another tip, guys, I'm not needing to do this because I'm probably just gonna delete these at the end, but what I will mention, I've done this too many times, so I'm just stressing this. Save your work, honestly. My computer has crashed so many times and I've done lots of work and then I've just literally lost all my work. <laughs> so please, don't be like me, save your work. Control S, save it when you first create it and just control S every time you kind of do a little change, like every now and again, every five minutes or so. Um, one other tip is I think there up here, there's an auto save thing that you can actually click on. I haven't ever used that, but I remember somebody mentioning that you could do that if you are worried about that as well. So anyway, let's make this balloon. So let's just go and grab a circle. Let's make it a little bit like an oval. Let's change it to, let's make a, let's make a pink balloon because we want to be fancy like that. Let's make a pink balloon. Okay, this little pink balloon here. Let's do, well, we could do an outline. Um, in this case, I'm going to, yeah, just change the outline, make it black and six points, insert. We're going to just add a little triangle. Super easy, nothing fancy. Make that thickness six and look at that. You've literally made a balloon. But what I will say is that one thing I forgot to do is make sure that this balloon is bigger than the page if you can. Um, it doesn't have to be that big, but like if it's bigger, it's always going to be a little bit better because when you scale it, then it's not going to lose its um, clarity as easy. So I'm gonna make that, send it to the back because I can see it's a little bit, yeah, it's better. Okay, um, so in this case, that is literally a balloon, super easy, super simple. So if I just select that, let's group it. Now I will just say, I'm just gonna um, duplicate this slide up the top here. So I've got another one of these balloons. 
and I'm going to actually show you something that you can do so um, first of all I'm just going to show you that if I take the outlines of both of these off it just changes the balloon so differently so I could even move that up now that I have gotten rid of the black line or I could keep that black line on and just move it up as well but there's my balloon there um, but what I did want to show you more so was you can actually change the fill of this so if you want to add a little bit more dimension a little bit more flair into this balloon all you could do is go to shape fill and you want to go picture so you can see here picture you want to click on a picture now I'm going to use a digital paper that I actually created myself so I'm gonna have to find that in my computer and excuse the traffic um, where am I? So my paper, let's go to digital paper. Okay. So I'm going to change it to this fun blue marble balloon. And I'm just going to go and click on that bottom part and click picture and change that again. And as you can see, I've just changed this balloon into this cute marble balloon now so i'm going to save this as a picture i'm going to save it to where i saved all the others i'm going to write blue marble balloon save and like you could use this in so many different things so yeah that is that so that's pretty much i'll give you one more tip as well guys this is just an extra bonus tip like i can't fit everything i know in one video but i hope that this has helped you so far but can i just show you one little thing quickly now this is not necessarily exactly clip art but it is something that you could definitely use so if you're wanting to spruce up your powerpoint um not your powerpoint if you want to spruce up your word documents if you want like a border all you need to do is add a rectangle Seriously, this is so easy. Um, no fill. Let's change it to like, say, six thickness and let's make it black. And what you want to do then is you want to go into see how it says sketched. There's a little one down here. It's kind of got scribble, squiggly lines. And voila, you've literally got a cute little background already, like border that you didn't have to pay for. So that's amazing um, and you can also make it obviously finer so if I go smaller weight if I want it a bit thinner perfect like if I want that thin skinny border look without being over complex to make it a bit more intricate you can just duplicate that and just so you've just created another one and just add a little bit in between and you've got like yourself a little border like how easy was that that took me three seconds so yeah, there's so many other tips I could share with you, but I don't have enough time because this video is getting so long. So anyway, hope you liked it and I'm going to catch you in a minute. Thanks, guys. Bye. So thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. You guys are amazing. And yeah, I really hope that this video taught you something today, that you learned how to create your own clip art. Now, it's really empowering to be able to create your own clip art in PowerPoint because then you can, if you're looking for something very specific, then you can create that for yourself and your classroom um, or your TPT store. Like I said, though, just be mindful of if you are creating for commercial use, like selling your PowerPoint clip art creations on TPT, that you do have to, one, have a business commercial PowerPoint account, and two, be mindful of trademark and copyright words, images, logos, whatever. So anything that you're creating, you need to make sure that um, it's not based off someone else's image. For example, you don't want to be creating Disney characters and selling that on TPT. You don't want to be creating Minions or Cat in the Hat products and selling that on TPT because that is infringing on trademarked images that don't belong to you. So when you're creating TPT, make sure that all of those 
beautiful creations you're going to create are your own and don't be afraid of um, being unique and you know putting something out there that is really just truly yours so yeah I hope this video provided you some value if you'd like to see any other kind of videos please feel free to leave a comment down below I'll quickly show you something that I'm working on for in the future so last night I started working on some watercolor pumpkins because I'm trying to figure out how to make traditional clip art and digitize it. So if that's something that you're interested in, soon when I figure it out, I'll let you know how I go with creating watercolor clip art to put onto my TPT store. So I'm still trying to figure out the process, but if that's something of interest to you, then stay tuned because I'm going to be doing that in the next few months I don't know when but yes that's something that I have on the cards so thank you once again for watching one last thing I just want to let you guys know if you're wondering this is not clip art related but if you're wondering why I'm wearing this t-shirt which is from the TPT forward conference this year so I attended the TPT virtual conference which happened this year in July and I because I'm from Australia as you can tell and as you know um, I've only just finally, like finally, like just the other day, gotten my, what they call TPT swag merch or whatever. Um, so that has just finally come now. And it was in July. It's September now. So, but I will say this top is super comfy. I have this in a medium, I'm pretty sure. And I also got this little tumbler. <laughs> It just says TPT Forward 2021 and you know I'm thought might as well wear it for a video to show you guys because I never got to wear it for the conference but yeah I will say I'm quite impressed with this tumbler I've been drinking my hot chocolate out of it like every day now and it's a good size and it keeps your drinks warm really well but yeah that's just something I wanted to share with you guys because I was actually pretty excited that I got this in the mail even though it took like two months to get here so if you're from Australia and you're thinking about going to the virtual conference like next year the TPT virtual conference